Priya. So today we talk about hematuria. The definition of hematuria is uh, the presence of blood in the urine. Okay, that's what hematuria is all about. Huh? So there are two main types of hematuria. One is microscopic, which is uh, also known as non-visible hematuria. Nowadays they call it non-visible hematuria. Where the urine looks grossly normal, huh? doesn't look like blood, but blood is detected on lipstick or by urine analysis. Okay, so that is the microscopic. The second group is macroscopic or cross hematuria, is, as is used to be called. Nowadays, they call it visible hematuria. That means you can see visibly see blood in the urine. So on urine inspection, it is reddish in color or brownish tinge, and the pre and also presence may or not have presence of blood clots. So these are the two main types of hematuria. And microscopic hematuria, examination of the urine is always essential to diagnose hematuria. Some drugs can cause uh, discolor the urine, looking simulating the microscopic hematuria, and this is known as pseudo hematuria. Okay, what's the importance of uh, detecting this hematuria? Okay, visible hematuria, there's a 14% 40, chance of being due to underlying malignancy. Non visible hematuria is about only 3%. Of course, the incidence of cancer reduces with age, uh, less than 43 is much less risk. Okay. Then you have got, so generally you have another type is known as the glomerular or extra glomerular uh, hematuria. And the other, this one I mentioned is visible and non-visible hematuria. So these are the broad classifications. Okay, now, visible, what is visible hematuria? As I said, it is uh, gross uh, macroscopic hematuria. Okay, that means there's blood, uh, there's, there's frank blood in the urine, eh? coloring it, making it pink, red, or dark brown. Non-visible, as I said, it is microscopic. If you look at it, the urine looks normal. Eh? So it either and it can be either symptomatic or asymptomatic. Symptomatic when there's pain eh? or renal colic. Eh? Usually it's suprapubic pain or renal colic associated. Whereas in asymptomatic, there's no symptoms. Okay, there is microscopic hematuria, uh, but no symptoms. Okay, these are the two broad categories. Eh? And what is visible hematuria can be painful or not painful. And the site of the pain is very important. Eh? When you pluck the patient, you must always find out the exact location of this pain, eh? which will tell you if it is uh, kidney origin, urethral origin, or bladder origin. Eh? And then the timing of this uh, bleeding in relation to micturition is very important. It can be either initial, okay, total or terminal hematuria. Huh? Okay. Initial is when the first 10 to 15 mils of the urine is blood stain. After that, the urine becomes clear. And this will tell you it is most probably from the lower urinary tract, especially the urethra. Terminal hematuria, when the whole stream of urine is blood, uh, sorry, the terminal hematuria is the final 10 to 30 mils of the urine is blood stain. Initially, the urine is clear. And this will tell you most probably the bleeding is from the bladder. Throughout, total hematuria is when the whole stream is blood stain. Huh? And this can be usually is from the upper urinary tract, huh? usually the kidneys and the ureters. It can be intermittent or continuous, depending on the cause. Stones, sometimes they bleed. After that, when the stones uh, become stationary, then there's no bleeding. And later, when it moves, it bleeds again, uh, intermittent or continuous. And this bleeding can be either localized to the urinary tract. That means there's some local cause for uh, immaturia. Or it can be generalized due to coagulopathy, when there's bleeding in other areas as well, okay? Other parts of the body as well. Uh. So these are the... Uh, types of hematuria and how do they present. Okay, a uh, few words about pseudo hematuria. Pseudo hematuria, the blood, urine is red in color, looks like blood, but it is not blood. Eh? So it means there's no presence of hemoglobin or RBC in the urine. So this can only be diagnosed, uh, uh, excluded by doing a urine uh, examination. And causes of this pseudo hematuria is Due to drugs, medication, the important ones are the rifampicin and metaldopa, hyperbilirubinuria, there's increase in, in the patients of obstructive jaundice, there's increase in 
conjugated bilirubin in the urine. Then you've got myoglobin, uh, globinuria, the presence of uh, muscle disease or injury leading to myoglobin in the urine. And certain foods, eh? beetroot and rhubarb are the two commonly used uh, vegetables that can cause stain the urine drain. Eh? So this is beetroot and this is rhubarb. Eh? I'm sure you may, might have seen these vegetables in your house. Eh? Now, the other one I said is glomerular and extra glomerular. Glomerular means the bleeding occurs in the glomerular apparatus. Eh? And extra glomerular is usually the external after the glomerulus. That means usually is surgical. Surgical bleeding hematuria is usually extra glomerular. And glomerular disease causes uh, bleeding and that is usually medical causes. Eh? So how do you differentiate between glomerular and extra glomerular? By using, by doing urinary findings. Eh? Red cell cast, usually absent in extra glomerular, may be present in glomerular. RBC morphology, dysmorphic, that means the RBC becomes distorted in glomerular, whereas in extra glomerular, the, all the RBCs are about the same shape, right? uniform. Proteinuria may be present in glomerular uh, bleeding, absent in extra glomerular. Clots, again, absent in glomerular bleeding, may be present in extra glomerular. Color, Maybe red or brown in glomerular, whereas extra glomerular, it, it is usually is red in color. Okay, if it is blood. So this extra glomerular is the one that we will be dealing with in surgery. Okay, and these are the features to suggest it is extra glomerular. Okay, then visible hematuria. I think this slide has been mistakenly added inside here. Okay, now what are the causes or the sources of this bleeding uh, hematuria? The common causes, trauma, infection, stone, urinary stone, and neoplasm. These are the four groups of conditions uh, that can cause hematuria. Okay, it can be divided into the upper urinary tract and the lower urinary tract. Uh. Upper urinary tract is usually the kidneys and the ureter. And the medical causes are these, which I mentioned. The dyscrasia, purpura, sickle cell anemia, anticoagulants, infarct, injury, or tuberculosis, uh, infection. So these will be the medical causes. Whereas the surgical causes will be mainly tumors, carcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma, Wilms tumor, hypernephroma, or renal cell carcinoma. Uh, these are the common causes of cysting in the upper tract and also stones in the kidneys and the ureter, okay, which are surgical causes. Those I have uh, highlighted in red here. It's medical uh, medical causes in green other surgical causes. From the lower urinary tract, very important tumor, bladder, and the prostate and the urethra. It's okay. Prostate, benign, malignant, uh, benign or malignant conditions of the prostate, tumors of the bladder, or can also be infection, and urethral neoplasms. And the other important thing is stone. Okay, very important. So these are the possible causes of bleeding in. Uh, immature, uh, in a patient with maturia. Okay, this one, another one, the hormonal causes, the four uh, groups of causes I've mentioned. It can be glomerular, which is usually medical causes, which are usually glomerulonephritis, nephropathy, and Alport's disease, and you know, various forms of diseases of the kidney. Extra glomerular are usually the surgical causes, the four things, neoplasm, pyelonephritis, stones, and trauma. Okay? So you must be very clear with this uh, setup of the urinary tract, uh, the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, uh, then the prostate in males, and the urethra also mainly in males. Uh. So these are the sources of bleeding uh, uh, in urinary system. Uh. Okay, now what are the general investigations you can do for these patients? Uh? Urine analysis, with the microscopy, this is a very, very important uh, examination. Nowadays, you can have an additional examination, this dipstick, uh, where you dip the thing into the urine and then you detect the blood or hemoglobin, uh, the color change. Okay, so these are the important, which can be done in the outpatient clinic. Uh, urine analysis, X ray KUV, ultrasound KUV, cystoscopy, which can be flexible or rigid cystoscopy, and CTU. Okay. Uh, after that, then you follow up with your contrast uh, CT urogram, uh, CTU, CT urogram, 
and cystoscopic examination. Eh? So these are the order of the uh, examination of the, investiga uh, or the investigations that you carry out for these patients. Okay, always urine analysis, urine inspection, XA KUB, ultrasound uh, sorry, ultrasound KUB. And following, and depending on the results of this investigation, you proceed on to do whether you want to do a CT scan or CTU, flexible or cystoscopy or rigid cystoscopy, depends on what you find on these three investigations. Okay, now we have got the general outline. First, you confirm the diagnosis. Okay. And usually, during uh, microscopy, more than three RBCs per high power field is usually significant. Usually, there shouldn't be any RBC. Huh? So, if anything more than three is positive. Female, sometimes they say, can be high as five to ten. So, sometimes it's possible. And in females, you must be always be on the thing. Uh, remember huh, that if this patient is menstruating, then urine examination becomes uh, uh, not helpful at all. Huh? Acute onset of unilateral uh, pain, okay, evaluate, uh, you look up for stones, pain is usually infection or stone, okay, you look for stone. If there are symptoms of urinary tract infection, you must do a culture and treat the infection with some form of antibiotics, uh, relevant antibiotics according to the culture. If it is evidence of glomerular bleeding, just RBC cars, uh, this uh, this more thick RBC, then you have to refer to the nephrologist for possible diagnosis with renal biopsy. If these risk factors for malignancy are present, then you may have to go for a CT urogram after the ultrasound and probably may have to proceed on with the uh, cystoscopy by the urologist. Okay, if referral to nephrology is caused, is not identified. If you can't find the cause, Maybe you must refer to the patient to the nephrologist. Okay, this is a simplified outline of manager, uh, ma uh, management of hematuria. To classify into this non visible, visible, and false. False, I think you, uh, once you do a microscopic examination, you can classify that thing into false or uh, true, uh, or, or true hematuria. If it is false hematuria, then you must try to avoid whatever drugs or food the patient is taking. Yeah. Okay. If it is visible, maturia or cross maturia or not visible, then you carry out the various tests which I mentioned: urine analysis, CNS, blood, uh, urine CNS, blood results, blood tests, X-rays. Huh? I told you just now, KUB and ultrasound KUB, and may, if necessary, proceed on to the CT program. So this will be the investigations to decide the tumor, diagnose the condition. So it can be either tumor, stone, infection, or trauma. Surgery, tumor is usually some form of surgery, either open or endoscopic surgery will be done. So this, these patients must be, all these patients, once you're diagnosed, you must be referred to the, either to the nephrologist or the urologist for further management. Stone is some form of lithotripsy. Infection, yes, uh, find out the cause of infection to a CNS and at the same time start antibiotics. Trauma, conservative, usually conservative, bleeding after a trauma, normally most of the time the bleeding stops, then you don't have to do, uh, do any surgery. If it is continues to bleed or massive bleeding, then you have to do some form of urgent investigation and surgery. Okay, uh, so these are the basic things I wanted to tell you about hematuria. So when you get a patient with hematuria, okay, you must look at the symptoms which I mentioned. You classify the patient into visible or non-visible or false hematuria, and then try to get the history to fit into the whatever diagnosis that you are suspecting. Okay, <clears throat> okay any question? Okay. So if there's no question, we continue with the uh, I'll continue with the short talk on uh, renal cell carcinoma because this is a quite a common condition. It is supposed to be the uh, fourth or fifth commonest uh, malignancy uh, in the in male patients, and uh, and it's also it's a diagnostic problem. Uh, so I think I, I chose this topic to demonstrate to you about yeah, immaturia. All right.
Now, in, before you proceed on with uh, like, uh, talking about renal cell carcinoma, you have to know there's some basic anatomy. Yeah? <clears throat> the kidneys lie retroperitoneally. Yeah? As you all know, it's a retroperitoneal organ behind the peritoneum. And either side of the either side of the vertebral column, huh? either side of the midline. Okay, they typically extend from T12 to L3 lumbar uh, vertebral. Huh? Although the right and the right kidney is often maybe slightly lower than the left side because of the presence of the liver and the diaphragm. Okay, liver pushes it slightly lower. And uh, it is supplied by the renal arteries on either side, which arise from the aorta, abdominal aorta, and is drained by the renal vein. Okay, which uh, renal veins empty into the infra vena cava, inferior vena cava, IVC. Yeah. Okay, and uh, on closer examination of the kidney itself, is made up of three parts cortex, medulla, and pelvis. Okay, and this pelvis is the one that joins to form the ureter, which drains the urine from the uh, kidneys to the bladder. Okay, and then the other thing is your the covering of the the kidney is very, very important, especially in tumors, in staging. Okay, you have three main layers here. Yeah, you got a capsule, the innermost one. Then you got a perinephric fat here. Okay, perinephric fat. Okay, renal capsule, perinephric fat. And this whole thing is covered by a fascia known as the gerotas fascia, which encovers the splits to encase the adrenal gland over the upper pole of the kidney. Okay, so these are important structures. Huh? You must remember capsule, uh, fat, peritoneal fat, and your gerota fascia. Okay, so the, the tumor is very important later. We'll talk about it. And the arteries are huh? supplying is your renal artery, and your vein is your renal vein. Okay, now what is renal cell carcinoma, also known as uh, renal adenocarcinoma? Or some people, and the most common among which is known as the clear cell carcinoma. That's the clear, clear on this. Yeah. Okay. So renal adenocarcinoma, renal cell carcinoma. You see, most common subtype is a renal cell carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma, which accounts for over 80% of the cases. It arises from the epithelium of the proximal convoluted uh, tubule. So it's a uh, extra primarily type of bleeding. Huh? And uh, so it's a uroepithelium, huh? the uroepithelium uh, cancer, huh? frequently detected uh, coincidentally. Huh? Very often, they don't know the symptoms they present. You go for some checkup for ultrasound for some vague pain somewhere, then they notice a lump in the kidney. All right? So that is coincidental. Major subtypes will be clear cell, papillary cell, and chromophobe. Renal cell carcinoma. Chromophore means blackish color, not clear cell. Huh? Okay, so this will be clear cell, papillary, and chromophore. So these are the three major types, huh? among which the clear cell is the most common, huh? over 80%. Male to female ratio, 2 is to 1, roughly. Peak incidence between 65 to 75 years of age, and it is uncommon below the age of 40. If it is occurs, before, before, under the age of 40, you must think of familiar type of disease. Huh? If present in patient under 46, it's possibly underlying hereditary condition. Okay. Okay, the risk factors, age is important, more than 60 to 65, big age sometimes can go up to 70 or 75. So 65 is taken as the cutoff only admit the peak age for these patients to get developed, uh, RCC. Sex, I already mentioned. Obesity is another risk factor. Hypertension, cigarette smoking. Medical conditions are important. Eh? Chronic kidney disease and patient of hemodialysis. Eh? These are important causes. This is an important cause of uh, renal cell carcinoma. Kidney transplantation after the transplantation. Acquired cystic disease of the kidney. Okay, polycystic kidneys of the kidney. Family history of RCC, underlying the uh, want uh, hippel Lindau disease, where there are multiple cysts and tumors in various organs, exposure to cadmium and asbestos, and this is very important uh, the use of non 
steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are NSAs. Long-term use is one of the risk factors for development of RCC. Okay, next we come to the clinical features. Okay, this is a very important condition that you must be familiar with. Asymptomatic huh? must prepare this. Huh? One of the very, it's a very, quite a significant number of patients are asymptomatic, you know. Okay, so they are usually detected when they come for other complaints and on routine examination, x-ray or scan, they detect a mass in the, the, the kidney. Then symptomatic, huh? so you have got symptomatic, asymptomatic and symptomatic. Huh? Symptomatic, about 60% of patients present hematuria. 40% with loin pain, huh? usually dull aching pain, huh? not, not a sharp pain. Huh? And just pain and old pain. Only 25%, only 25% with present with the mass. Okay. About 15% of them have this all three together: hematuria, loin pain, and mass. And this is known as a triad, triad, huh? triad of pain, hematuria, and mass, which accounts for 25%. Okay, so hematuria is the most common symptom of uh, uh, RCC, especially painless hematuria, painless total hematuria. So if a patient, uh, if it's a right age group, comes with painless total hematuria, then you must always exclude uh, renal cell carcinoma. The other important features will be in these patients, they are usually unexplained weight loss anemia. Renal cell carcinoma is one of the diseases that can present with PUO, uh, okay, fever, paraxia of unknown origin, anemia, okay, weight loss, race, RBC, polycythemia, and disorders of coagulation, okay, and plasma protein and liver function test abnormalities. Eh? All these are functions. And another important symptom, a group of symptoms is known as paraneoplastic syndrome, which I will talk to you in the next one or two slides. Paraneoplastic syndrome, eh? and also the presence of a varicocele on the left side, okay. Left renal vein thrombosis by the tumor, especially if the tumor is involved in the left kidney. All right. Okay, this one to, just to show you this. Okay, this is the left kidney, left renal vein, huh, where the renal vein, the testicular vein, left side, drains into the renal vein at a right ankle, almost right ankle. Therefore, if any tumor that spreads into the renal vein can cross, uh, block the uh, testicular vein on the left side. And this causes varicocele and some degree of hydrocele as well. Okay, so this is the reason why, if in older patients, if they develop uh, patients of say 50 years old, 60 years old, they develop varicocele, okay, you must think of left renal carcinoma causing the blockage of the testicular vein here. Okay. Okay, now I've told you the paraneoplastic syndromes, which I mentioned. Okay, this, what is paraneoplastic syndrome? This syndrome is due to ectopic hormone production, okay? Kidney is one of the uh, organs that produce this syndrome where they produce ectopic hormones. So the symptoms and signs will depend on the hormone that it produces. If it produces, these are the common uh, hormones produces, erythropoietin, it causes polycythemia, raised HB, Renin, it causes hypertension. If the hormone produces insulin, patient develops uh, diabetes and hypoglycemia. If the patient, if the hormones produce ectopic hormone is ACTH, then the symptom produced, uh, sim symptoms produced is due to Cushing syndrome. Sometimes it can produce ectopic parathyroid hormones those the patient develops hypercalcemia. And in some patients, they develop gonadotrophins and this can lead to gynecomastia, amenorrhea in female, reduced libido, and sometimes baldness and loss of hair. So these are all depend on the type of hormones that are produced by this tumor. If this and the symptoms depending on the hormone that is produced. Then hematological problems, anemia, metabolic problems that I told you, pyrexia of unknown origin, uh, unknown, uh, unexplained weight loss, and uh, and these are some of the symptoms that you must consider in patients. Huh? Okay, now the investigations. You have got blood and urine investigations. That's very important, which I mentioned. Low anemia is very important. 
urine examination, important. I told you to look for type of hematuria that the patient is producing and whether it is truly hematuria or false hematuria. And the other important thing for uh, in urine tests is looking for malignant cells. If there are malignant cells, then your diagnosis is confirmed. Okay. Then abdominal and kidney ultrasound. Okay. And this, uh, you can look for hydronephrosis due to blockage or a large mass in kidney. Mass lesions. Okay. And stones. Mainly to look for mass lesions and stones. Uh, ultrasound. Uh, X-ray abdomen and uh, ultrasound abdomen. Uh, KUB ultrasound, KUB X-ray. Uh, these are the things. Then you have got CT scan. Depending on what you see on ultrasound, then you may want to proceed on with CT scan where it will con reconfirm presence of a mass lesion in the kidney or other organs. It can also be used for lymph node, uh, metastatic and uh, lymph nodes in the abdomen, parietic lymph nodes and staging of disease if it is cancer. Then bone scan, uh, radioisotope bone scan here for look for bony metastasis. PET scan these days, PET scan is becoming more and more commonly used and also maybe chest x-ray and chest CT scan. This is mainly for staging. Okay, the diagnosis and staging, these are summarized here. Classical triad is immaturia, loin, uh, loin pain and loin mass. Very often it may be incidental. Eh? Then you proceed on with the renal scan, ultrasound, CT scan, which I mentioned just now. Sometimes we may have to, if there's mass there, you may have to do the chest and abdominals and pelvic CT scan as well. And CT guided biopsy. Eh? The CT scan biopsy is a tumor. Eh? The lesion on, uh, is shown, is less than three centimeters and no evidence of metastasis then you may want to do an ultrasound or CT scan guided biopsy of the lesion. Okay, so this will uh, avoid unnecessary nephrectomy. Yeah? Those days are very difficult to do a, a biopsy of the kidney. So you may do nephrectomy and then post-operatively the, uh, the biopsy comes back as non-malignant. Huh? So you don't want to do that nowadays. Huh? So you go for either ultrasound or CT scan guided biopsy. And I said, PT scan, PET scan, positive uh, emission tomogram, and this will determine, uh, will reveal the metabolic and biochemical function of the of the cells or organs that we are, which are normal. Okay, this is important. Huh? Nowadays, this is becoming an important uh, form of investigation for staging for distant metastasis. Okay, here ultrasound shows you a tumor here. Okay. Hypoechogenic, heterogeneous, and heterogeneous suggests the cells are very, the tumor is very irregular, which is a feature of the uh, malignancy. And also the capsule is important. Uh, over here, whether the capsule, there's such uh, suspicion of the capsule being involved. Huh? So, in these cases, you must suggest the patient to uh, contrast uh, uh, CT scan. Huh? Okay. And this is an ultrasound guided biopsy yeah? patient here, lying prone here, ultrasound probe to kidney here, then you do a biopsy. Okay, and the needle goes right into the affected kidney. And where the mass is, you can take either FNAC or biopsy. Okay, this is the CT scan yeah? of the this left kidney here. There's a mass here. Okay, the lower pole here. Yeah? Here again, another patient with the ultrasound CT scan showing you a uh, well encapsulated. Here is not sure, uh, this part, medial part is not sure whether this capsule is involved. So we may have to do some more higher resolution uh, CT studies. And here it looks more like well encapsulated. Okay, so CT scan is the most important diagnosis, uh, the investigation for a patient suspected with uh, renal cancer. Okay, here another, uh, another scan, CT scan shows you mass here. Okay, and here another mass in the uh, right kidney, it's also right kidney, another mass here. And then it shows this is here inside, it shows you some uh, hypolytic lesions. Okay, and maybe this is the adrenal gland here. Huh? So you have to look for 
capsular equation. So sometimes one film may not be able to see, then you do series, huh? serial film, uh, CT scan pictures, then you can uh, build a picture, have a 3D picture to see whether it's involved or not. Okay? So you look at the lesion itself, the size of the lesion, the borders of the lesion, whether irregular or uh, smooth, and the status of the capsule, whether there's capsular invasion or not, and also only for lymph nodes, parietic lymph nodes. Yeah. Okay? And this you give them contrast, huh? contrast and us. Huh? So once we this contrast page, then you will be able to see the any inflamed uh, and large lymph nodes now. Okay. Having done all this, then you can come to the TNM classification staging. Yeah? So staging is renal cell carcinoma is stage one to four. Okay, depending on the D and M staging. Huh? So this is the uh, stage one and two will be T1 and T2, N0, N0. So these are considered early tumors. It is T1 is earlier, so no, much, much earlier, so it's less than seven centimeters. Okay, remember, breast is five centimeters. Okay, here is 10 centimeters, huh? uh, so seven centimeters. Okay, T2 is less than seven centimeters. Both this T1 and T2, they are confined to the confined to the kidney, so that they have not gone outside the kidney. So considered early renal cell carcinoma. Stage three, or more, okay, the size is more than seven centimeters. And then the, there's perinephric tissue involvement, but the carota specia is not uh, infiltrated. Eh? And also, uh, no uh, tumor thrombus in the way. Okay, so this will be T3. T3 and 1. The lymph nodes are going to be present. Okay, M is 0. Okay, and stage 4 is the final stage, is the late stage, T4 or M1. Huh? Involves ipsilateral adrenal glands, it invades the gerota special. Okay, so 1 and 2 are good prognosis, 3 is intermediate, and 4 will be the, the poor prognosis. Yeah, here again, these are the various uh, stages. Stage 1, less than 7 cm. Stage 2, less than 7 cm. Uh, this is less than 7, this is more than 7, but within the, uh, in the kidney. Stage 3, when the capsule is involved, you know, capsule, right? these are the three layers which I mentioned. Right? And stage 4, the ger gerota specia is involved. Okay, or the uh, distant metastasis. Lymph nodes, usually the, there are three groups of lymph nodes. Paraiotic lymph nodes are the most common. Renal hyla lymph nodes, which are earlier, and also the cable lymph nodes, huh? inner cable lymph nodes. Okay, so these are the three groups of lymph nodes to which the kidney can drain. Okay, now we come to the final part, huh? the treatment for renal cell carcinoma. Huh? Surgery, and the form of surgery is nephrectomy. Yeah? And there are a few types of nephrectomy, partial nephrectomy, which is also known as nephron sparing nephrectomy, where a part of the kidney is removed. Okay, so it's like a white excision. You take a breast tumor, it's like a white excision of the tumor. Then this next one is known as a total nephrectomy, where the entire kidney is removed, but the carota specia is not removed. Okay, so the entire kidney is removed with this capsule. Then radical nephrectomy, okay, which is another common form of nephrectomy which is being done, depending on how far the disease has spread. Okay, so in this operation, you remove the surrounding tissue with the garota fascia, the lymph nodes, and your adrenal gland. Okay, this is called radical nephrectomy. Then in surgery, most of the time nowadays is either partial for early cancers or radical for more advanced cancers than D3. Then the next, next line of treatment is radiotherapy, which can be either external or internal. Okay, can be either external by the external uh, beam radiotherapy, or nowadays they are internal by using wires or guide wires or seeds. They say planting seeds into the kidney, yeah, which you can reach through percutaneously, and that can cause uh, uh, terminate or uh, destroy the. Uh, cancer cells. Chemotherapy, use of IV antimicrotic drugs used to be a very common method before, but now it's becoming less and less useful because of the side effects and also the, the not so effective compared to other forms of treatment. 
Then you have for biological treatment, also known as immunotherapy, yeah? okay, which the drug affects or modifies the immune system to destroy the cancer cells, yeah? uses the body mechanism to injure. So these are becoming nowadays in renal tumor is a very important uh, method of treatment. And five, targeted therapy. Yeah? This is another important treatment that is becoming more and more popular. In fact, by, uh, this immunotherapy and targeted therapy have now become more important than your chemotherapy. Okay, and the most important uh, chemotherapy agent is your known as tyrosine kinase inhibitor, TKIM, which the names I've mentioned in a short while. Huh? Okay, so these are drugs that are used to attack certain cells without damaging the healthy cells. You target specifically for certain cells bearing some protein receptors on their cells. Okay, and this, for example, the thy uh, tyrosine kinase. So inhibit this protein, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Okay, so very targeted. That means the other normal healthy cells may not be affected so much. And lastly, vaccines and cytokines are another important group of drugs and hormonal therapy, although not so common. But if the if this, uh, disease is, the cancer is producing, as I said, hormones, then you may have to give anti hormone therapy as well. Okay, I'll go through some pictures. Radio, radical nephrectomy, yeah? this is radical nef nephrectomy, or kidney, perinephric fat, gerotas fascia, ureter, adrenal gland, and lymphomes, parioptic lymphomes. Huh? They are all removed. And the uh, renal vein and artery ligated and cut off. Okay, this is radical nephrotomy. Yeah? So, this is important to know because in MCQ they can ask you radical nephrotomy involves excision of what? To know what it is. Okay, this is a radical nephrotomy. You have a kidney that you remove. Okay, this is the tumor here. Okay, this is the renal cell carcinoma. Removal of the capsule and perinephrine fat plus the keratose fascia. Involves the renal gland or adrenal gland. Eh? Okay. Now, there's one exception when fish, the tumor is in the lower hole. Eh? If the tumor is in the lower hole here, okay, but the adrenal is in the upper hole. So, if it is a small tumor less than five centimeters located at the lower hole of the kidney, uh, uh, then the adrenal gland, which is far away from the lower hole, can be spent. Okay, this is what uh, now this one. This is the latest thinking. Uh, and then the other one is your regional lymph nodes, uh, the insulatural parioptic lymph nodes of lymph as well. Okay. Okay. Partial white excision as a tumor. You excise with the margin here, maybe about two centimeter margin. Okay, the tumor is removed, and then you close the skin even. Okay, so this is known as partial nephrotomy. Also, nowadays, they call nephron sparing nephrotomy. Radical nephrotomy has already mentioned that. So, you put kidneys removed with the surrounding tissues. Okay, now, partial uh, nephrotomy is becoming increasingly more popular these days. The complete removal of the primary tumor while preserving the largest possible amount of healthy renal tract. Indicated in patients with T1 tumors, okay, normal control control kidney. And this, uh, apart from early T1 tumors, it is also recommended for patients with RCC who have only one kidney anatomically and functionally. In which case, one kidney is lost, either is absent or either has been removed the accident or are a tumor before. So once these patients have only one kidney, then you try to do partial uh, partial effective. Uh, so they preserve sufficient function uh, to prevent uh, disease. Then those to bilateral synchronous RCC. So both sides for tumors, synchronous on both sides. So you try to just do partial and you cannot remove both the kidneys and then you need kidney transplant. Uh. So you try to remove the, the do a partial Nephrectomy so the kidneys can be preserved. And those with one, we call the Vipal Lindau syndrome. Uh, this is a pre uh, malignant condition. So if they develop, when and when you remove the partial nephrectomy. Okay, you can't go on and being on continuously until the whole kidney is gone. Okay, so these are the special uh, indications for this. Uh. So now this is coming more and more 
important that in our research, uh, the teaching is wherever possible, partial nephrectomy should be the preferred treatment because of it is it has got comparable long term cancer. Those days they thought it was a radical nephrectomy is the best, but now with early tumors, this is equally equally comparable. Right? And also, there's lesser risk of chronic renal insufficiency. Right? That means the kidney screening and failure is much less than. Right? Okay. The other important, another important treatment is uh, localized treatment is called radiofrequency ablation and cryotherapy. Yeah? It can be radiotherapy or thermal ablation and cryotherapy. Yeah? Okay. This is for elderly patients who are not fit, unsuitable for surgery. They got health, health risk and they're not fit for surgery, then you may be considered this. Considered for growth less than 3 cm, 4 cm, that means with T1 tumors, you have to consider this can be considered again. Okay. Completely destroys all viable tissues, usually done laparoscopically, or nowadays they're also being under the cutaneous uh, CT scan or ultrasound guidance, but most popularly done under laparoscopy. But the problem is it's high with local recurrence. Okay, so it's a very, very minimally uh, invasive surgery, but high local recurrence, which for patients were unsuitable, I think it's suitable. Uh, it is a preferable operation uh, because they are old patients, multiple medical problems, so they cannot go for surgery. Then you have to go for this. This you can try to start a treatment. Uh. Okay, finally, summarize the treatment options. Surgery is either uh, stage one and two. Medical, partial, nephron sparing, and minimally invasive methods, which I mentioned, is the video of uh, thermal ablation or laser. Now they say laser, and these are all the stage small tumors, stage one. Ideally, for stage one. Then the others will be immunotherapy. These are some of the drugs. We don't have to remember that. These are some of the drugs which I think the year five we may have come across this. Chemotherapy, radiotherapy, only now this for selected patients, vaccines and cytokines, target therapy, and this is another important uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitors and monotherapy. Okay, so these are some of the DKI, uh, DKI with drugs that are used, JT DB, all the DBs are DBs, Sofra, Venib, Suni DB, these are all different types of uh, tyros tyrosine inhibitors that are being used in this. Uh, Okay, now the summary of treatment by the stage, stage one, two, three, and four. Stage one, less than seven centimeters, limited to kidney, and if you carry out the treatment, the survival rate by is as high as 95%. Partial nephrectomy or radical nephrectomy. Radical nephrectomy used to be the most popular treatment, but now people are going moving towards partial uh, nephrectomy for smaller size tumors. Stage two, more than seven centimeters, again, limited to the kidney. The treatment is radical nephrectomy or partial nephrectomy is selected. I think for stage two, most people will go for radical nephrectomy and the survival rate, five years survival rate is 58%. Stage four, sorry, stage three, here, yeah, tumor in the major veins, adrenal gland is intact, keratus fascia is intact, okay? So, regional lymph nodes may be for five years of rate, but the treatment is 59 or percent. You see, go for radical nephrectomy plus that renalectomy, tumor thrombosis excision, and genomization. Okay? So, these are very important. And, and stage four, the tumor is beyond the gerota spatia and there's consistent metastasis. Five years of oil rate was worse, 20 percent. Okay? So, these patients are mainly for palliative treatment. And systemic treatment, which I say, the diocese kinase inhibitors, immunotherapy, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, it depends on the patient. Okay, so here it shows you the various stages are one, two, three, four, and this is your time in the middle. All right. Okay, the prognosis this summarizes stage one, 95%, two is 88, three is 59, four is 20%. Okay. And survival here again summarized here. Okay. This shows you the prognosis of the earlier stages. Okay. Now we come to the renal cell carcinoma. It's a summary. What are the things you asked? 
expected to take back loin pain, mass, and hematuria. This is a triad and which occurs in 40%. And if these are the symptoms, then we'll be worrying. And if the patients have these symptoms with the right issue, we'll be worrying. And usually painless bleeding, meaningless hematuria. Okay? So painless hematuria is more threat, uh, frightening than painful. Painful is usually stone or infection. Varicocine, uh, left sided varicocine in older patients. Okay, usually varicocine occurs in children and younger patients. If you develop an older patient, then you must think of uh, you know, and the weight being on the loin, affected loin with loss of weight. Okay, this is another important thing. Uh, and the patient usually they look quite well in uh, paraneoplastic tube syndromes, which I mentioned, depending on the type of hormones treated by the tube. And the last the most important thing that you must go back is thinking of these asymptomatic patients. So once there's asymptomatic patients, these are patients no symptoms, they come for other forms, other type of treatment, teen examination. Now it's very common to care for teen examination, then they find a mass there. And then so these patients are relatively quite valid. They say they are fit, no problem. So these are the important things that you think of in your success. Okay, any any questions? Anybody, any questions about this uh, renal cell carcinoma? Okay, this is a common condition. Eh? I read up because when you get abdominal case, one of the uh, differential diagnosis of a mass in the lungs and it's a renal tumor. So you must be quite angry. Okay, since we have time, what we do is, uh, since I nobody volunteered to come for a clinical case, I shall go to a clinical case where you pass and I can finish it in 15 minutes time. And hopefully, by then you have some questions to ask. Okay, the clinical case scenario, this is, I think I already sent you the detailed history yeah? okay, of a clinical case and the questions. Yeah? So I won't go through the reading. This is the full history of the patient. I've just summarized the history here. A 54-year-old 54 man, three months history of pain with the left loin and blood stain during that for one week. Okay, very, very classical. Huh? Right age, three months history of uh, left loin, uh, history of left uh, pain over the left loin and blood stain during for one week. Dull ache on the left side, person with time and no radiation of the pain. The blood stain of the the stain of the urine was throughout the urine and urine stream, total material. It was bright red. Okay, no history of trauma and no history of passing stokes. Huh? So, always with patients with hematuria, you must ask the patient the history of trauma is very, very important. Huh? No history of fever, pain of maturation. Okay, pain of maturation is absent. So, that means you can exclude stone and other things like infection. But he noticed to have some loss of weight. Okay, so in the history, I think the detailed history tells you uh, about more detail about how he lost the pain. And it's also a known case of hypertension, diabetes, or diabetes, and of treatment. Okay, now looking at the symptoms, eh? okay, now for all these things I mentioned, okay, and also the last one here, you're not sure whether he's taking drugs, which I mentioned just now, and there whether any blood thinners like platelet, anti platelets. And offer uh, offer it to people. This is important. If these are important, then you must think of blood coagulation problem. Right? These are things. Okay. So these are the summary of the uh, symptoms. Eh? And what from based on these symptoms, what will be the problem? Eh? So the problem is loin pain, hematuria, dull ache, total hematuria, loss of pain. The fifty-four year old man. Okay. So the number one thing I will think of is a uh, renal tumor. Of course, other things will be you know, uh, renal retract infection, the uh, renal stone, okay, or trauma, okay, pyelonephritis, trauma, uh, these are all uh, other possible causes. Okay, so you have to look at the history and make sure that other things can be as well. Okay. So, clinical problem this and the possible diagnosis will be this. Okay, this is the full examination, eh, which I've sent to you also. You can go through the results. Okay, I don't think I have to go. 
trying to go inside. I just give you the summary. Examination, it looks well. And if it's right, blood pressure 165 over 99, the pulse rate. So what is important is general examination. It's the hypertension that the patient has got. In fact, it's already a name. In case of hypertension. Okay. If it's a newly diagnosed hypertension, then you think of maybe a renal cause for disease. Probably in this case, you can't say that, okay? The abdomen was soft and not distended. There was mild tenderness in the left flank. Kidney punch was negative, okay? This renal punch is an important sign. I want to say that there's a renal tenderness or renal punch positive, that means it's usually some form of infection to the kidney, yeah? The liver and spleen were not enlarged. His left kidney was vaguely palatable and it was slightly tender. Very, uh, very close feel was bloated at the left side. Okay, these are all classical features of palatable mass. Okay, so in this patient, he has got tenderness or pain, he has got maturia and an enlarged kidney. Yeah? So we got the triple uh, try it. So analyzing the symptoms again, we got a PP here, calcium. Renal cause, if it is first time, I can think of a renal cause. I'm going to make it uh, attribute it to a, a renal cause. In fact, if it's already a known case, then the significance is not very, very, very significant. Eh? Mild tenderness in the left hand. Okay, so I said in kidney, it is stone infection, the tenderness and pain very severe. Whereas in these patients, it's mild tenderness, aching pain, and Tenderness is one. And large left kidney, which, which is palatable and very cozy on the left side. Okay, so these are important things. Huh? And what will be the clinical problem of this patient? Left blank mass, kidney, immaturia, very cozy. Huh? So this will be left renal consuming. Okay, RCC, which is the most common, stone with hydronephrosis. And infection, which is unlikely because there's no pain. Okay, so these are the possible diagnoses. So coming back to this, our, our most likely diagnosis will be a renal cell plus once it comes, and then this will be differential. And yes, for purpose, but as far as we are concerned, you know, we're more likely to be this diagnosis. Okay, now what will be the test that you're going to do? So as I said, you're going to do blood test, urine analysis, very important. Especially looking for signs of infection, the signs of stone, RBC in the blood. And the other one is most important is for uh, cytology, uh, looking for malignant cells. Between. And then there is imaging, which I mentioned earlier, just earlier just now. What are the imaging you do? X rays, KMB, ultrasound, KMB, and if necessary, proceed with CT scan. Okay, so this will be there. And in this patient, most probably you may have to go on to do the uh, biopsy. Okay, so investigations, there was blood in the urine, confirmed. Okay, normally they will report it as a pack field. That means every high power field is packed at RBC. And the other cytology was negative in this patient. So once the cytology is negative, then you have to further investigate to find out the cause. Lipocytosis is negative, protein is negative, so this is not a glomerular type of bleeding, and glucose is positive, and patient is a mode diabetic. Okay, this would be the plain x ray, KV. This is a normal one. I just data for you just to show you what a normal KV looks like. Okay, this is the spine here, center, right and left. These shadows on either side of the spine. Is known is due to the source shadow even. Okay, and here maybe is where the kidney is. Again, we may be able to see some shadow. Some if the patient is well prepared, not much power gas, you may be able to see a shadow. Okay, here definitely yeah, there's a large mass here of renal mass. This is a renal Okay, so this is what uh, x ray can show. But often, if it is, you don't really get a, such a big mass, if it's a small mass, you may not be able to see on extreme. That's why you go on to do a ultrasound. It shows here, this is the whole kidney, and there's a mass in. Okay, and uh, this mass is lower hold, and here the capsule is bridged, not very sure. So these patients may have to go for the uh, CT scan. 
this is another measure. There's a kidney. This is the whole kidney. There's a measure. Okay, irregular hypoecogenic measure. So this is the relation to the kidney or something. Okay, once you get this, as I said, depending on the ultrasound. If the ultrasound shows normal, then maybe I report it to a CT scan. But in this case, there's a mass. So I think we have to proceed with the CT scan. And the CT scan shows this. It's a kidney, the lower bone has a mass here. Okay, and once this is shown, the urine no medical cells are going to go for Okay, again, another one here. There's a mass in the upper bowl of the left kidney. This is the lower bowl of the left, this is the right side. Okay, so once this is there, then what will you do next? Next management will be confirm your diagnosis by biopsy. Okay, you know biopsy and the CT scan or ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound guidance if the radiologist is comfortable to do ultrasound. Okay, uh, so then uh, once you've done this, you can confirm the diagnosis and also stage the disease with the CT scan. How it is. Scan. Most of the time we do hospitals have CT scan. PT scan is PET scan is not uh, available in most places. So we do CT scan. Okay, you we'll stage the disease according to the DNA. T1 and T2 is we'll proceed for nephrectomy. T1 maybe I'll do a, I recommend a partial nephrectomy. T2 maybe for a medical nephrectomy. Okay. Nowadays very rarely people do total nephrectomy. Because instead of total, I think you can find a short do partial because the outcome and right? the long term outcome is about the same. Okay. So total is remove the kidney, but partial you leave part of the kidney. So there is total maybe more beneficial presentation than total different. Then T3, you may have some form of uh, operations, you know, there are procedures known as cytoreductive chemotherapy. Yeah? In, in, for example, in PB and in Press, we say downgrading. So, this is called in here, they call it cytoreductive chemotherapy, radiotherapy, okay, uh, or, or DKI or immunotherapy. And then, after that, reduce the size followed by nephrectomy, plus or minus. If it responds, maybe you go for nephrectomy, okay. D4, of course, the treatment is negative, chemo, target, or immune, okay. The others, Deep adenectomy. Okay, these are part of a radical nephrectomy, adrenalectomy, and radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is especially if the, the metastasis in the bone or somewhere in the bone, for example, in the spine, then radiotherapy is very useful for localized disease. Localized disease, huh? Okay. Any questions? Okay, still no questions. I'll just go through a, a few questions from this patient. Okay, the answers, which I will send it to you all later. Question one, what are the symptoms and signs, the cause for worry, which I already mentioned. If for your old man, pain in the loin, one month, uh, blood in the urine, one week, tenderness and mass in the left flank. So these are worry. Especially in a four year old man. The older he is, all worry it is. Okay. Secondly, what does the CT scan of the patient show? This is the CT scan. It shows you a mass in the left kidney. The capsule seems to be intact. Okay. So it may be already size is, you have to measure the size, it's bigger. So I think it must be at least D2 or D3. Okay. What is the most uh, possible diagnosis? Renal cell carcinoma of the left kidney. Possibly a bit more common of the capsule bone. All right. What is the significance of the left varicocyte in this patient? Occlusion of the left testicular vein by tumor from the left uh, renal cancer. Renal cell carcinoma emits into the renal vein and that causes the blockage of the testicular uh, vein here. So that causes very good seeing this patient. Okay. Occlusion of the left testicular vein by the tumor. The last one. What are the treatment modes available for this condition? Surgery, the form of left nephrectomy. Okay, which can be in this patient. I think if it is involved, I think it has to be a radical nephrectomy. TXT may be, uh, 
depending if there's any other secondaries. Partial nephrectomy is it maybe it's not ideal for this patient. It's a big cancer. Okay, of course, in an actual uh, patient, you will have the size of the tumor mushroom. So, okay, and uh, others will be chemotherapy and targeted therapy. Okay, this is another, this is the last slide. What is your diagnosis in this situation? I think it's already in the area of cell carcinoma. Name the investigations. I already told you. In a urine analysis, for cytology, RBC and cytology. Ultrasound abdomen, CT, and real pipes. Okay. The ultrasound shows your left renal mass at the upper pole. When this, what is your next step in the management? So I will do a CT scan. And a CT enhance the biopsy under CT scan. Okay, CT enhance CT, then biopsy under the CT scan or ultrasound scan. It should confirm the diagnosis. And what's the most malignant condition of the kidney? Renal cell carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma. Okay, the definitive treatment for patients with D1 will be a radical nephrectomy or partial nephrectomy. Is that the one that these people recommend? D1. And lymphadenectomy, hepatomy, usually is not a type of the conditions. So this was a traditional management. You all see nowadays people go for just partial nephrectomy. Okay, and then followed by uh, the target therapy. Okay, okay, any questions? That's all.